Hello, English 1301. Welcome to the fall 2022 semester. Uh, this video is just going to discuss and review our syllabus and just give an overview of how my online course is structured. Should you have any questions? Because I know that instructors all kind of design their courses differently. So I think a video tutorial helps ease the stresses of that. Should you have any questions as you watch this video, write them down and you can set an appointment to meet with me or email me and I'd be happy to help as well. So um, when you log into Blackboard, we use Blackboard for all course assignments for you reviewing course material, um, downloading things, you know, anything like that, even communicating with me is all through the, the learning management system Blackboard. Uh, so to get to Blackboard, you need to log in with your information and you have your list of courses. I can't show you that because I'm not enrolled in all your courses. But uh, once you click my course, English 1301 on Blackboard, you'll be taken to this homepage. So this is how your homepage will look. It won't change much from this throughout the semester. Just each week, you'll see more files popping up down here. But uh, this will be our course homepage. Uh, what I wanted to do first is um, you're going to see three files here. So I'm going to talk about the syllabus actually first to take care of that. If you ever need to find our course syllabus, I recommend that you download it and save it to your own computer or print it just because you have it on file. If it ever gets updated, I will let you all know, but you can always access our course syllabus right here. So when I click it, uh, I'm going to review it with you today because syllabus day is so much fun, right? Sarcasm, I know. Um, I, I also like to review the syllabus. I say this to every class, but it's true. I like to review the syllabus just to make sure I don't have any typos. I teach a bunch of different classes, so I want to make sure I'm in the right course. <laughs> I give me all the right documents. If something doesn't make sense and it sounds like it's for another course, don't hesitate to ask me. Um, you all can keep an eye out too for me. <laughs> Uh, so this is our course syllabus, English 1301 for the fall 2022 semester. My name is Renee Maluli. I am your instructor of, for the course. Uh, I've been teaching at EVCC. I just finished my fourth year, so I, I love it. It's awesome. I love teaching online, too. Uh, I'm really fascinated by curriculum, so I like to design my own online course. It's nerdy. I'm a nerd. I love it. Um, so if you ever have questions about the structure of my course, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, Miss Maluli is fine. Renee is fine. Either one to address me. Uh, this is my email if you need to get a hold of me. Oops, not the whole thing. I can't highlight it. Uh, this right here is my email. When you click it, it should do something. I don't know. I've never done that before. Uh, it's the EPCC Outlook Mail. If you don't know how to find that, what I'll do is show you here. I always go on my.epcc.edu and log in with my information. And then when you click right here, I'm on a laptop, so it may look different if you're on a phone, you know, or something like that. But you look for where it says my email, my email. And that's how you can send me an email through there. I like that email system a little bit more. I check that constantly. I check it once, twice, three times a day. So um, depending on what's going on for the day. So that's the way to contact me. Be a little careful because the email address they gave me, um, this is a this is an L and so is this. So just be careful. Always, I think copying and pasting it is on the safe side. Um, the letter L is in my email, not the number one. Just annoying, right? It looks like a, um, a number, but it's a letter. If you email me and it's been days and I have not gotten back to you, um, try to contact me again to double check to make sure you have the right email address. Um, or another way you all can message me is right here where it says messages. That is Blackboard Messenger. So when you click it, um, it's not showing for me, but when you click this little plus sign, you can find my name and send me a message on here as well. I'm not too fond of Blackboard Messenger because it never gives me a notification right away. Or not right away, but it has it kind of hidden. It's a little annoying, but I don't mind Blackboard Messenger. You are more than okay to message me on here as well. So those are two ways to get a hold of me. Like I said, if it's been days and I have not gotten back to you, double check and then reach out to me again. I'll talk about my response policy shortly. So um, 
office hours, office locations. I'll talk about the course in a second. Let's talk about the office. I have in-person office hours as well. If you're home to the Via Verde campus and you'd rather do that, just because you're in an online course doesn't mean you can't meet with me during my in-person office hours. I teach in person as well. I'm there 3.30 p.m. through 5.30 p.m. every Wednesday. I'm in the fancy new building. There's a whole second floor dedicated for us. Uh, at Via Verde. If you're there and you're like, I don't get where this is, send me an email and I can help you out as well. If you don't want to meet in person, that's fine. I have online office hours every Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And I use what we call Microsoft Teams. I'm going to zoom out. Sorry, it's going to be a lot of back and forth right now just because I don't want to forget what I'm telling you all. Uh, every Friday, if you click this link here on our Blackboard homepage, click it. Um, and you click this link right here where it says click here, it'll take you to my virtual office hours on Microsoft Teams. Every Friday, I am there. Uh, I'm just there. I have, I'm logged in, I'm working on other stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll hear a, um, whatchamacallit, a notification that somebody's waiting or somebody's joined, and I'll hop in and see who, what's up. So you can join any time in that time frame. You don't have to go right at eight. You can jump in at nine. Uh, obviously after 10, I won't be there. But or if you go on another day of the week, I won't be there. But don't you can just hop in. You don't have to email me. I think a lot of students are hesitant, thinking I'll be in the middle of talking to somebody. That could certainly happen. But you can hop in and say, "Oh, can I come back in like ten minutes, fifteen minutes?" That's fine. Uh, don't be shy. I like virtual office hours too. They're there. Something else to consider: if you click this link on Friday during that time, and I'm not there, or you're getting an error message, Teams isn't perfect. You're getting an error message. I'm not answering. Um, something else to consider uh, what's important is to email me right at that time because I have my email open just in case somebody is trying to get in and there's an error. So please, if I don't hear from you, if I hear from you like the next day, um, I won't know what's going on. So always email me if you get any kind of errors just because I'm not aware. You know, I'm in there waiting and I'm not sure. So just be careful with that. Uh, if you cannot meet during any of these times, I understand. I have a crazy schedule this semester. I understand if you do too, if you have other classes, you have work, you have other lives going on. Um, set, so go ahead and email me and set an appointment to meet with me at a different day and time. Uh, if it's going to be a different day and time, it'll probably be an online meeting. But um, I'll probably ask you to send me three different days and times that you're available so that we can match up. I'm more than happy for you to schedule an appointment with me instead. Uh, textbooks. This is the required textbook for the semester, a writer's reference, 10th edition, and this is this should be the correct ISBN number. Um, you can get the book digital or hard copy. You can rent it, buy it, whatever is financially appropriate for you. Textbooks are stressful. Don't make it stressful on you. Whatever is easier for you to get. Uh, and if you have a better deal with an earlier edition, that's fine. It's just going to be a little bit more work for you to communicate with me during the weeks we're using this book to make sure you have the correct page numbers. You'll have to email me okay. early to verify, or if you want to get it out of the way during the first week of class and we just outline everything, that's fine. Um, I'm, I am um, flexible with the textbook. Uh, this right here, this link, if you click it, I have options from former students on out, outlets that they got the textbook that are appropriate for you and that makes sense. So um, what I recommend too with the textbook is to uh, email me before you purchase just to, to be on the safe side to make sure it's the right book. But like I said, you don't have to feel pressured to get it from the bookstore um, or hard copy or buy it. You can rent it. Usually renting's better. Usually it's the rental ebook that's the best option. But if you click that textbook link on Blackboard, I have different options for you as well. However you can get the book, just communicate with me on that. And let me know if you have any questions about that. Required materials and technology. I mean, since this is an online class, you need internet connection for wherever you're reviewing the course. Access to your EPCC email should you need to contact me. You also get course announcements from me in that email, so that's important to check often. Always check your email from other instructors, too, in the school. Uh, Blackboard mail is fine as well, like I said. Access to Blackboard to get access to all of the stuff and assignments. Uh, access to some type of computer or laptop wherever you're doing your work for the semester. You cannot use a cell phone to complete or review coursework. I mean, unless you're just checking in, you're just reviewing something really quick, checking grades or sending an email, that's fine. But um, you do need a computer or laptop to complete the majority of this coursework. 
Uh, you want access to Microsoft Word. If you don't have Word, you don't have to buy it. Google Docs is acceptable as well. Why? Because you're typing your major essays in the course and all of the, a lot of the other coursework on uh, Microsoft Word or Google Docs only. If you have Apple, do not use Pages because Blackboard doesn't preview the file and I can't give you feedback. And that's a problem in a writing class that you don't get feedback on your work. Um, if you're unsure what I'm talking about, this right here, the first folder for the week that you're going to review, um, I have little tutorials, how to save Microsoft Word files, how to use Google Docs if you're interested, um, skip it if you have Microsoft Word, but if you want to try out Google Docs and you can create a Gmail account or you have a Gmail account, you're not sure how to use it, this file right here is a great tutorial for that. Uh, you want to save your file, your Microsoft Word at, and or Google Doc files as Docx or PDF only. It's appropriate for Blackboard and it'll, it won't give you any kind of error when you're trying to submit. So if you're not trying to do that, this tutorial, this link here shows you. Uh, making sure you have the correct internet browsers. Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Safari are the most common ones. Firefox, I'm not sure anymore, but it should be fine. Uh, if you're not sure, and you can click those to download to make sure you have the appropriate browsers as well. Back to the syllabus we go. Let's see. If any of this is too technical and you're confused, again, don't hesitate to email me to verify or if you want to meet to go over this stuff. Uh, like I just said here, you want access to an appropriate internet browser. Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, and Safari are the most common. Um, so those are the ones to do. And like I said, that file on Blackboard explains it in more detail. So again, saving your work as docx or PDF only. PDF is preferred because it freezes it like it's doing here. Um, so Blackboard doesn't distort the file. Uh, USB or flash drive is not required. It's recommended. Uh, however you save your work, make sure you back it up, whether that means emailing it to yourself, uh, or having a flash drive or anywhere in between, back up your work. You can not imagine how many times I've gotten e emails from students freaking out because they lost all their work and there's nothing we can do, right? So just save your work. That's it for the required materials. Um, this is 1301, so a major requirement by the state is that you all complete at least four major essays. So you're doing four essays, writing four essays in this class. Everything we do on Blackboard in terms of folders, lectures, readings, writing activities, topic proposals, or anywhere in between uh, discussions, workshops, peer reviews, et cetera, are um, ways that will help in the planning and preparation of those essays. Uh, just a reminder, this course is online, but what that means also is that it is asynchronous. So a course is asynchronous Oops, sorry guys, tech error. Uh, this course is online instruction, but it's also asynchronous. What that means is we do not meet for a virtual class. Uh, you will have weekly deadlines to review and complete on your own so that you can pace yourself throughout the week. That means that whenever something is due for the week, you need to dedicate time out of your week to review complete it with your own schedule. So that's the good thing about asynchronous is um, you have a little bit more freedom in when you want to complete coursework within the weekly time frame that you have. Downfall, and I suffer from this too at times, trust me, is dedication in doing it. <laughs> so you have to really test your time management skills with um, asynchronous online courses. But it's just better because the course is offered that way, first of all. And um, it just works with everybody's schedules, right? Because everybody has different schedules going on. Uh, it's recommended that you dedicate at least eight hours a week in this course. It may be more, it may be less. Truly depends what's going on for the week too, as well. So that's just a little reminder there. Uh, these are objectives with English 1301. So I'm just going to summarize these. You're going to take on these objectives constantly all semester. So you're going to kind of adapt and learn from them as we go. But composition writing uh, enforces that you learn how to communicate 
to a given audience, um, understanding how to persuade with the rhetorical appeals of persuasion, understanding the world around you through community issues and a research essay, and understanding and evaluating what it means to find credible sources for research, uh, and critically analyzing any of the assignment expectations to understand the rhetorical situation. That's a lot of jargon. So like I said, each week we'll break down what those mean, and you'll be applying those all semester. You're going to learn so much in this class. I'm so excited for you. Uh, something I like to say is uh, my class is not themed, so I like you all to choose essay topics. They're open, so I like you to choose topics that are interest interesting to you. I don't like to have themes. I don't like to force you all to write about something that you don't have an interest in. So majority of the work and topics and essays are um, open topic, which is cool, I think. Uh, always keep track of your grades through the My Grades tab on Blackboard. Let me go out of there. I shouldn't say My Grades anymore. That's outdated. This is a new Blackboard design. Uh, gradebook. Gradebook right here when you click it is a way to always keep track of your grades. So if you have any grade questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. You're going to probably freak out once or twice with the gradebook because Blackboard grading is kind of confusing. Um, sometimes things look like they're missing when they're not, or it may be missing and I'm letting you know, uh, just all I'm, my whole point is don't, there's no dumb question when it comes to a grade concern on Blackboard. Uh, you can earn a total of, I'm going to double check with my calculator too. You can earn a total of a thousand points in this class by the end of the semester. A perfect score is a thousand points. Uh, what that means is every letter grade is a hundred points. 1,900 A, 899, 800 B, so on and so forth. So sometimes students freak out when they see that. They think it's a lot of points, so it's scary. Actually, that's for your advantage because maybe you had a bad week. That way it's not detrimental, hopefully. To your grade. You have a lot of points coming your way that so if slip ups do, hopefully not, but if they do happen, uh, they again hopefully won't be detrimental to your grade. Um, because we're only human, right? Just I'm double tucking my mouth. Okay, we're good. Uh, so this is a full point breakdown of everything we're working on. Like I said, you have four major essays in this course, so these are them and what they're weighed each. They will have their own separate assignment guidelines and grading rubric during the week that they are introduced. Just a reminder that an essay is never due the week that it is introduced. You need time for these essays. You have to take on what we call the writing process. So because of that, you need time to get comfortable with them, to think of topic ideas, to get my feedback on the idea, to workshop, all that fun stuff. So um, major essays. Uh, speaking of, there's something called topic proposals. Those are kind of like outlines or ideas that you have for each major essay. They're there for me to review your ideas before you get started writing the essay to make sure that you're headed in the right direction. So topic proposals happen during the week that essays are, are introduced so that you can brainstorm topic ideas first before you get started so you feel more comfortable with your topic before you begin writing. Um, because we have four eight essays, you'll have four topic proposals, one for each essay in the class. Uh, and then you'll have workshops, four total. Why? Because workshopping essays with each other and with me, a great way to get final feedback before you submit the final draft. My battery is going to die. Hopefully it doesn't die while I'm recording this. Um, because you have four essays, you'll have four workshops, one for each essay. Um, although, yeah, I'll double check that. Um, writing activity, yeah, you will. Uh, writing activities, uh, something collectively that we'll work on throughout the semester, um, depending on what's gone for the week. You'll have writing activities that will apply the weekly objectives and just for you to get some extra practice with your writing. Um, they're, they're scattered throughout the semester, so collectively they're worth 200 points. So all of this is a grand total of a thousand points. You know, if any questions about that, let me know. Instructor policies is so important because every instructor has different policies. So for my course, in terms of communication, uh, please email me or visit during office hours if you have difficulties with anything regarding the course. Themes, objectives, essays, Blackboard questions, finding work, files not downloading, etc. If a link doesn't work, please let me know. You can email me that. Uh, I always check, but sometimes, you know, something slips by. So if something's not working, let me know. Um, 
Emails are great for quick questions. If you're really confused about something, I'm going to definitely probably tell you to visit during office hours or to schedule an appointment so that we can break down everything that's going on. I am more than happy to meet with you to plan out ideas for an essay, to review a rough draft with you. It has to be with you for an essay draft um, or anywhere in between. I'm here to help you uh, any stage of the process that, that you're in with major essays as well. So consider that that's a great way to utilize office hour visits. Uh, of course, if you know you're going to be unable to submit assignment ahead of time, submit it before it's due, not after. Do not wait until the last minute to contact me about missed work because um, I won't know what's going on until it's a little too late. So just be careful of that. Uh, regardless, communicate with me. Early on, I will not know about any difficulties you are having. I'm here to help you. So any questions? There are no dumb questions. Uh, late work policy. If you do not submit an essay on time, meaning the major essays in the course, uh, you will have three other chances to submit. This only applies to the major essays. But the only essay that cannot be submitted late is the last essay of the course because it's your final exam. So the late work policy for the other major essays, the three remaining ones, uh, if it's one day late, it's a 25% deduction, two days late, 50% deduction, three days late, 75% deduction. If you do not submit by the third day, you'll receive a zero for that essay grade and will not be allowed to turn it in. That's not to punish you. It's just that this course moves so fast that we're already going to move on to a next essay after you submit the one before. So it's just a way to keep you moving forward with the class, with the motions of the class. Uh, don't email me any coursework or essays unless I tell you otherwise. I get a ton of emails and it'll just get washed away. So just be careful with that. Plus, it's not going through the Blackboard grading system. Um, and that's not good because you're not able to see my feedback or a grade, grading rubric with it. No other work in the class can be submitted late. So that includes all of these topic proposals, workshops, and writing activities. Moving on to rewrites. If you receive a C or lower on an essay, I will allow you to make edits. Consider the following. If you make the exact edits based on my feedback, you'll receive one letter grade higher. If you do not make the exact edits that I suggest, just a little bit here and there, you'll receive half a letter grade higher. And obviously, if no edits are made, then and it's the exact same draft resubmitted, your grade will stay the same. You will have one week from when you receive the grade to revise and resubmit. So check your grades off and be careful with that. Again, why? It's just because we got to keep moving on with the course. Uh, the last essay cannot be revised for the same reason why it can't be late, because it's your final. So it's due during finals week. Grades are due shortly after for our department. No other work can be revised. That includes topic proposals, workshops, and writing activities. Not to punish you, but just, um, again, like I said, we just move so fast that it's hard to keep up with work from the past and also current work. It starts to pile up and become overwhelming for you. Uh, classroom policies. Only use your EPCC web email or Blackboard message to communicate with me me. That's a school policy I have to follow. I will not respond to Gmail, Yahoo, or anything else. Uh, it may not even go to my email address folder. It may go to spam or junk. So um, just be careful with that. Uh, if you do email me, I will respond within 24 hours if it's sent on Monday through Friday. I do check emails sometimes on the weekend, I pop in to check, but I can't guarantee they will be answered within 24 hours just because I'm grading prepping for next week or doing something else. So um, if you do email me over the weekend, I'll get back to you by Monday. If you cannot meet during office hours, like I said, I am more than happy to meet with you. Just send me an email and we'll, we'll align our schedules together. It may, be, may take a little bit of patience to make sure we have the same meeting time that works, but it'll happen, I promise. Uh, happy to meet with you. Uh, I hope you don't have to drop the course. If it's about grades, speak to me first. I can't guarantee anything, but we can talk to see what's going on. If you decide, we both decide that it's better that you drop, or if you need to drop for something else outside of the grade, you know, life happens. Hopefully it doesn't happen. But uh, if you do need to drop, something important is it's your responsibility to drop from the course. I do not withdraw students. Um, sometimes students think if they just stop submitting work and they just take the zeros, that I'll eventually drop them. No, you will stay enrolled in the course. So by the end of the semester, it'll be a failing grade and that's detrimental to your GPA. 
If you don't know how to withdraw from a course, I can happily help you. But just know that you have to officially send the paperwork. Um, so something to consider. We're in an online course. So be kind to others, to myself and others in any form. Pretty obvious, common sense. Treat people with kindness. Uh, Netiquette policy. Technology is not perfect. I understand. If you have difficulty submitting anything, please email me at that exact time. If possible, please record it and take a picture. Not that I don't believe you, but so that I can understand what the error is, so that I can give you advice on what to do. Um, don't plagiarize. Submit original work. You're going to learn research writing towards the end of the semester, so that if you do borrow information, if you're new to research writing, we do APA format here. If you're new to all of that, you've never heard of it, or it's been a while, don't worry. You're here in this course to learn how to do that. Um, but you are submitting original work, or if you are borrowing work, you're going to learn when we get into the research unit how to correctly um, cite that information. But we'll talk about plagiarism, I think, a little bit next week, actually. Uh, we use SafeAssign, so it scans your document to see if it's original work. These are just resources for you, should you need them. If links don't work, please send me an email. I can send you the appropriate links. I'm going to go ahead and scroll here. These are important dates for the college. So if you have any questions about withdrawal dates, holidays, and census dates, finals, let me know. And the most important part uh, of our syllabus, something that you should check weekly and that you should probably download or print at least these remaining pages of the syllabus, uh, because I'll refer to them a lot, are, is our course calendar. Uh, this is our outline of the entire course in terms of what week we're in, what objectives we'll be covering for that week, what readings we'll have for that week, and uh, what's due for that week. So take it week by week. It's intimidating to read everything from cover to cover, but I always tell students that check into what week you're in and maybe peek into the next week just so you have an idea what's headed your way too so that you can plan accordingly and think about things a little bit more with that. So, um, for example, we operate on a Monday through Sunday schedule for this class. Uh, let me explain that a little bit more. Since class is asynchronous, you're going to have what's called a weekly module folder. It'll open every Monday morning for you to review, and it will close that Sunday of the week. So, every Monday as early as you can. Monday morning is preferred, but every Monday doesn't mean you have to get started on Monday, but I recommend just checking in to see what's in that folder, see what you have to review so that you can plot your week around that folder um, so it's not as overwhelming. It's pretty impossible to wait till Sunday night to look at everything and to submit what's due for the week. Uh, prom I promise I'm telling you from experience, it's just not a good idea. So for example, we are in week one. These are the dates of week one. Like I said, it'll be every Monday through Sunday of the deadline. You have from Monday morning to Sunday night to review and complete the coursework. These are the objectives. Um, we're going to introduce the course, review Blackboard and the syllabus. And actually, this is a reading that's going to be moved into next week, I decided. Uh, so your reading this week is just the syllabus. And then you have a writing activity due by Sunday. That, you don't have to wait till Sunday to do whatever is due. Uh, you can do it as early as Monday when it, this whole week becomes available. So just so you know. And then when week two will open will be that Monday, August 29th. And you'll have from the 29th through September 4th to review all of this and to complete that that's popping in next week. If you have questions about that, please don't hesitate to let me know. So I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail right now. Um, that's something to consider. Um, that's our syllabus. If you all have any questions, let me know. You can find it here. So let's talk about those weekly folders a little bit more. Like I said, every Monday, you'll see a new weekly module folder. It'll pop up right here, and it'll have what dates it's available. Uh, when you click it, there'll be a drop down, and you'll see files that are a part of that folder. Depending on what's going in the week, going on during that week, uh, is how many files will be in there. So it'll be different each week. 
but uh, it'll always start with this first. It'll tell you uh, what week we're in, what module, and then what dates are uh, that you the module is available for you to review and complete. Like I said, it'll always be mon Monday. It'll open, be available till Sunday night. Um, I love movies and I love songs, so I always like to start the week off with a movie suggestion and the songs of the week. You're never required to watch these or listen to these. I just like to start the week like that to get our mind off of school. Um, but this page has more important information at the bottom where it'll tell you what the objectives are for the week, the readings, and what's due. This copies exactly the syllabus, uh, so it'll be mirrored exactly the same. And uh, each weekly folder will start with this page, just so you have an idea of what's going on. If you have any songs or movie suggestions, send them my way. And you can review the module by clicking these arrows like that. Or if you want to, you can just take it one by one like that. If you click it like that, it'll take you to each one too. Uh, if you notice, I have everything. So like I said, let me go back. This is how it'll look to you. You have to click it to see the files. Uh, what I, If you notice, I have it numbered 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. It's in a numerical order. That's my visual reminder to you all to go in the order that it's uh, in. It's a progression so that each file guides you to the next file in a logical way. Not so much this week. There's all like boring technical information, but um, you'll see with week two that it'll make a little bit more sense. But follow in the order that you are seeing the numbering system. Um, and it'll always end with some type of assignment due. So as your syllabus says, there's a writing activity due for week one. It's going to be tempting to, and I've done this before, so I'm telling you from experience, where you click it and you're like, I don't want to look at any of this stuff. I just want to do the assignment. And then you click it, but sometimes I'm going to be referring to some of these files. So you have to go back and review it. So to make it less painful for you, trust me when I say, just follow the files in order and then save the assignment, the actual graded assignment for last. Uh, so for week one, there's a writing activity to consider with that. And I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. If you all aren't sure. Um, so that is our course. Um, like I said, nothing much will change from what you're seeing here. Um, once week one completes on Sunday night, Monday morning, August 29th, you will see week two folder below and you'll click it and it'll look similar to this. Will it be files for you to review, complete, and an assignment that'll be due. Um, should you have any questions, it'll make more sense as you get more comfortable with it, especially if this is your first online class or you've never had an online class like this before. Um, this calendar is okay to use. Students like it a lot, but just be careful because it'll just show you the assignment that's due. And when you click the assignment, you're going to be like, I don't get it. What file is she talking about? So you always just want to start with these folders and review everything in the folder. Check your syllabus to make sure you complete the activity. And it's just that peace of mind. I'm here too to help you all as well, of course. Um, so that's our course, y'all. I'm going to stop because I feel like I've been talking forever. So if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to let me know. And I am so looking forward to officially getting to know you all and starting our fall of 2022 20, <laughs> semester. Have a great start.